Hello students, welcome to ePadashala. This is Dr. S. Prabha. We are going to see today the assessment of physical fitness levels. Before going in detail, we see what is exercise first. Exercise means human movement or physical activity. It involves formal activities like calisthenics, movement done in sports, dance and Calisthen dance and games as well as less formal activities are considered as exercises. For health benefits, physical activities should be done in a moderate or vigorous intensities. It can boost the immune system and mental sharpness and helps to avoid obesity, diabetes, cancer and heart problems. In human body, Nutrition and physical activity go hand in hand. The working body demands all three energy yielding nutrients to fuel the physical activity. Carbohydrates, lipids and proteins all contribute to body fuels. Good nutrition is an important part of leading a healthy lifestyle. Good nutrition combined with physical activity can help to reach and maintain a healthy weight, reduce the risk of chronic diseases and it promote overall health. After going through this module, you will be able to understand the need for assessing the physical activity levels, recognizing the forms of assessing the physical activity and to comprehend the procedure for the usage of tools. Now we will look into the definition of physical fitness levels. Physical activity refers to any bodily movement produced by a skeletal muscles that increase energy expenditure above the basal level. Physical activity is a complex multidimensional behavior. Many different modes of activities contributes to total physical activity. So these includes occupational, household activities, transportation, by using walk or by walking or cycling for work and the leisure time activities also included in that. So exercise is a subcategory of leisure time physical activity and it is defined as a physical activity in which planned, structured and repetitive body movements are performed to improve or maintain one or more components of physical fitness. So this definition was given by Hardman and Stenzel. Physical activity can be further categorized in terms of frequency, duration and intensity of the activity. The duration and frequency refer to how often and how long an activity is performed. Intensity refers to how hard a person is working and or at what rate of energy expenditure for doing an activity. The physical activity intensity refers to how hard a person is working or at the rate of energy expenditure that an activity demands. The physical activity levels are defined for a non-pregnant, non-lactating adult as that person's total energy expenditure expressed in a short form as TEE in a 24 hour period divided by his or her basal metabolic rate. The formula for calculating physical activity level is PAL is equal to total energy metabolism divided by 24 hours by BMR or physical activity level is equal to total energy expenditure plus basal energy expenditure. Why this physical activity is important? Physical activity improves the quality of life. It extends the durability, helps to prevent us from stroke, obesity, hypertension, non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus, colon cancer, osteoporosis and depression. It also helps to maintain full functioning and interdependence among the youth and elderly. So we can see now the relationship between physical activity and improved health. It includes physically fit individual will always require a less oxygen mandate at given level of physical activity and also a less chance for blood to form clots where arteries have contracted 
and he also shows improved flexibility in the arteries and differences in the brain and brain chemistry progress mood and cognitive performances physical inactivity is a serious nationwide problem and considered as a national burden that causes many unnecessary illnesses and premature deaths so role of exercise is a way of life to integrate physical activity into everyday routine active living is a combination of physical activity and recreation activities to encourage a healthier lifestyle for most adults the department of health and human services recommends these exercise guidelines aerobic activity at least to be done for 140 minutes of moderate level or 70 minutes of vigorous aerobic activity of for a week or a combination of moderate and vigorous activities can also be done activities can be considered vigorous moderate or light in intensity so moderate to physical intensive activities can count towards meeting the daily activity needs light intensive activities do not increase the heart rate to its maximum hence such activities will not count towards physical activity recommendations so at least alternate days of vigorous activities are required to maintain the minimal health and the performance levels of an individual the moderate amount of physical activity can be attained in variable ways people can select activities that can enjoy and that fit into their daily lives because amount of activity is a function of based on duration intensity frequency and same amount of activity can be obtained in longer sessions of moderately intense activity such as brisk walking or in shorter sessions of more strenuous activity such as running a moderate amount of physical act- activity is roughly equivalent to a physical activity that uses approximately 150 kilo calories of energy per day or 1000 calories of per week so moderate physical activities includes brisk walking bicycling general gardening dancing playing golf playing recreative sports and doing some household chores and we can now uh, see the vigorous physical activities it includes running or jogging more than 3 to 4 kilometers fast walking for 5 to 6 kilometers bicycling for a long distance heavy works involving heavy physical labor swimming for more than an hour or doing aerobics or some playing competitive sports for a certain duration now physical activity level is a method to promote an individual's daily physical activity level measured as a total load helps to assess one's energy expenditure with the help of the basal metabolic rate in order to uphold the specific lifestyle so physical activity levels can be projected based on the nature of activities the individual is engaging daily so the forms of activities the well can engage daily are classified as aerobic activity strengthening exercises for muscles and bones and some form of stretching exercises aerobic activity benefits the hearts and lungs helps to move the large muscles such as arms and legs so running walking bicycling jumping jacks swimming dancing or the examples of aerobic activity aerobic activity also also called as endurance activity helps to make the heart and lungs to work better strengthening activities improves the strength endurance and power of the muscles and bones doing sit ups push ups lifting weights running walking etc helps to gain strength next comes stretching stretching helps to improve flexibility and the ability to fully move the joints 
so doing some stretches touching toes yoga exercises the form of stretching exercises can help to improve our suppleness and flexibility so the combination of these three things cardio based workout stretching and strengthening together for a week helps to improve the fitness quality of an individual let us now uh, briefly see the benefits of doing this physical activity uh, some diversified health benefits are this reduce risk of heart attacks manage weight better lower blood cholesterol level lesser the risk of type 2 diabetes and few cancers drop blood pressure and stronger bones and muscles and joints will be uh, will develop drop the risk of falls and it will make the individual to feel better with more energy now we see how to assess the physical activity levels physical activity is a complex behavior as we see as i said earlier it is said to be a complex behavior that can be assessed in variety of ways a variety of gadgets can be accessed for evaluating energy outflow and also for the physical activity precisely by objective methods or some self reports uh, also can be done these procedures can be used to evaluate the physical activity and inactivity or both can be used for investigation and exploration purposes physical activity is that any physical movement created by the muscles that grades in a caloric expenditure so this notion implies that the heavier individual the greater will be the energy expenditure the activity based energy expenditure is the role of the total energy expenditure so no sole method can effectively evaluate all the aspects of the physical activity that are needed so based on the feasibility and need follow other available physical activity uh, testing levels so that this has to be based on total energy expenditure is separated into three components that is resting metabolic rate rmr and diet made energy expenditure that is dee or muscular activity expressed in aee so the resting metabolic rate represents the quantity of energy essential at rest to uphold the body temperature other influencing factors are this rmr uh, like age body composition and gender so uh, the following methods can be used to assess the physical activity levels the first method is the criterion method and the other methods are objective methods field tests direct observations can also be done and some self questioners or reports can also be used we'll start with the criterion method the criterion method can be evaluated by the direct calorie metric this method is considered as the vital one for physical activity assessments from which the endorsement of other methods can also be done one of the earliest method of assessing physical activity is this a direct calorie metric even this method is not considered feasible due to some practical reasons but different techniques are there for variety of physical activity settings in this method the next method is indirect calorie metric this method is the measurement of energy expenditure by calculating oxygen utilization be used as a criterion method for certification so the doubly labeled water is an alternative method of indirect calorie metry in short we say as dlw so this dlw can be used equally for laboratory and field tests the merit of this method is that the body's functioning capacity is directly related to the physical activity the use of dlw technique offers the real estimate for energy expenditure in the free li living humans under regular conditions hence it is considered as the golden standard for energy expenditure so this dlw is a perfect method 
for the use in free living subjects since it is not an invasive or non restrictive method the only requisite of this method is the subject is to give urine and saliva samples before and after drinking an early dose and then return in one or two weeks to give the final urine sample during the period between the initial and the final urine and saliva samplings the subjects are free to carry out their usual work and are not essential to keep the diaries or wear any devices the physical activity has to be objectively measured of otherwise the doer will underestimate or overestimate the activity level or energy expenditures so overestimating the activity level or calorie expenditure will bring undesirable consequences so it is best to go for the to use of pedometers as a criterion method pedometer can be a motivational tool for people wanting to increase their physical activity pedometers provides objective measurement of physical activity and are one of the potential remedy to the problem of inaccurate activity recall these pedometers are most accurate for evaluating the steps it is a small tool with an elastic that uh, trace actions in a perpendicular way which is frequently tied on the waist or in the wrist of an individual it is used to calculate the footsteps over a phase of time so this helps to translate the distance into steps and count when an average stride length is taken most of the physical activity levels are done in the form of walking or running so the speedometer can uh, be considered as a valuable technique for estimating the total movement other activities like swimming cycling lifting weights cannot be calculated in this technique is the major uh, drawback of this method the other demerits are the intensity of the movement also will not be measured in this so electronic pedometers provide an accurate observative and low cost method of measuring walking and other ambulatory activities so in addition pedometers have been extensively used to measure physical activity in longitudinal training analysis and they are progressively being used in epidemiological studies of diversified populations how does a pedometer works while walking for for every step the body tilts to one side and it swing the leg forward and for the next step the body tilts the other way and swing the other leg forward too so each tilt of the hips and swift of the legs is a step or a stride might have same stride length so we need to finally count the total steps in a day by counting how many uh, steps the body swings from side to side so it has to be multiplied with the distance covered by this way the pedometer works the accelerometer is a device that measures popular ac a proper acceleration proper acceleration is not the same as coordinate acceleration the rate of change of velocity like so accelerometers are movement monitors that have the ability to capture the intensity of the physical activity it is being attached to the doer's waist ankle wrist with the help of a clip or belt so accelerometers operate by measuring acceleration along a given axis using any number of technologies including piezoelectric micro mechanical springs and the changes in capacitance so the major functions of accelerometer is that the sensor converts movements into electrical signals so that are proportional to the muscular force producing motion so these counts are summed over a for a specified person of time and stored so many accelerometers have the storage capacity to assess physical activity over 21 day period using a 60 second period benefit of accelerometer is that even the inactive time can also be measured with this so this cannot be possible in a pedometer 
the people of all ages can use this technique the major drawback is that the accelerometers are not precise in calculating the activity such as weightlifting and many other household household chores however they can be used with people of all ages and this method is easy to use but confusing for the investigation it is an assessors the next and the final method of motion sensor is heart rate monitor heart rate monitor is one of the basic and important signal which is very much helpful for assessing the physical exertion this has been used in both medical and investigation situations to evaluate the activity based energy expenditure so the hr monitor is easy and fast to use in both clinical and field settings the intensity of the work done can be easily measured with the help of the heart rate monitor and this can be used for children and adult too the field test can be used to measure the health related components like cardiovascular endurance flexibility body composition muscular strength endurance with standardized test we have come across this earlier so before arranging for the field test it is vital to regulate the regulate for the economic feasibility efficacy reliability in conducting each test so subjects acceptance to be acquired before conducting any type of field tests the method for to assess the body composition is it denotes the proportion of fat bone and muscle that encompasses the human body often stated as a relative versus fat free mass so it is commonly used method for estimating body mass index underwater weighing is the best method for measuring the body composition the other test to measure body composition are bioelectrical impedance skin fold testing and the measures of the circumferences next is cardiovascular endurance cardiovascular endurance examines the efficacy of the heart to bring oxygen to the working muscle and it is directly related to the ability to accomplish a moderate to greater intensity over a long period of time so this cardiovascular fitness can be measured by cooper fitness test and also by using some step tests next comes the muscular strength and endurance it is the ability of the muscle or a group of muscle to exert force against resistance or to withstand the resistance for a long time the other few general field tests for muscular strength and endurance are pull up push up tests flex dom hang tests and abdominal curl test and one norm test can also be used for calculating the strength next and the last uh, field test can for physical uh, fitness assessment is the flexibility it is a complete array of movement in a joint or a group of joint that is possible in a transitory exertion with or without the partner and it can be measured directly or indirectly by goniometer and other related tests or back stretch test and sit and reach test direct observations can be done during the physical education classes leisure time activities trials while taking stairs or during sidewalks or by own or with the help of the experts consciously the nature and type of activities its intensity and volume to be recorded so this manual observation may be true to some extent but not always so uh, and the merits of the direct observation are a physical activity can be evaluated through various extents and the possibility of getting refined data in contrast the listed out demerits are waste of time and labor and money too when compared to the other methods and the last um, method is the self reported questionnaire method so the self reported questionnaire are moderately cheap and easy to organize and considered as a main tool for observation and epidemiological studies so the self reported physical activity questionnaires remain the main valuation method for outsized observational studies despite their limitation so many are using this method also some physical activity can be measured quantitatively or qualitatively to be carried out with the least disruption to the subject that should be considered as a main point so among the prevailing 
measuring methods the finest and the appropriate tool to be designated first and perfect technique that can be efficacy efficaciously validate the levels and designs of physical activity has to be identified and used for the research purposes let's summarize a physical activity is a complex multidimensional behavior that can be characterized in terms of frequency duration intensity and mode exercise is defined as a subcategory of leisure time uh, physical activity which is planned and structured and it's performed to, to improve the physical fitness there are multiple options for measuring physical activity good evaluations to do more than satisfy the curiosity so good evaluations can lead to a program improvements documenting positive results and can attract funding to continue and expand programs and communicating the results also persuade other communities to adopt effective approaches so program evaluations using quality physical activity measures can contribute to achieve our shared goals of improved health and performances thank you for staying with me thank you